Was anybody able to look at that? Was anybody able to look at what kind of courses they would, you would be taking? I mean, sometimes it was kind of hard to find the specific classes. Yeah, it was. You had to do a little digging, and that's that was the whole exercise of doing that. Because the project that we're going to be doing is that we're going to, I'm going to have you put you guys in groups, and you guys are going to make a presentation of the progression of a certain type of engineer, whether it's mechanical or chemical or whatever it is. I want you to say that well, in college. He's going to take these these classes for the first two years, and then after the third and fourth year, he'll be taking some these classes. Once he graduates, his starting salary will be such and such, and you know that type of thing. So that it's type like of thing. Like PhD? Huh? It's like PhD? No, not a PhD. Not I mean, a regular. If you were just an undergrad, so if you were going to do just undergraduate undergraduate work, so mm. four years later you graduate you get a degree and then you would enter the workforce. And once you get a job, how would that progress? Okay. So that's the type of things that we would discuss or you guys would be working on your project. Okay. So let's see, why don't we do this? Why don't I give you guys like two or three minutes and I want each of you guys, well, no, 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 never mind, never mind. We'll just go on to 1.4. Let's move on to 1.4. Let's move on to 1.4. And in 1.4 in your book, we are now talking about the specific type of engineers, okay? Actually, we are not. We are talking about something else before that. 1.4, page 14. On page 14, it says the engineering disciplines. So we're going to talk about... The engineering disciplines, types of engineering. Okay, All right. So we talked about first of all that there were four basic engineering, right? What were they? Anybody? Can anybody tell me what the four basic engineering types are? The mechanical, chemical, civil, and electrical. Correct. Okay. So, uh, so the first thing that's going to happen once you graduate from college is that you have to take what is called the engineer in training test or the fundamental of engineering exam. Now it's called the, it used to be called the EIT. You, it is called now called the fundamentals of engineering um, exam. And that basically makes sure the board get to, gets to say that, well, okay, we gave you guys this test. We know for sure or are confident that you have the fundamentals or the basics of a kind of wide, array, wide range of engineering, okay? So that's what that is. And that's the fundamental. So you'll be taking the fundamentals of engineering test, okay? And the reason why I have to take this test, because this test is a... This, uh, you need to take this test so then you can take the PE test later on. The PE test is the professional engineering. And so the professional engineer actually is where you get to say that I'm, you know, you are a professional engineer. So you have to have at least taken the fundamentals of engineering test first. And then at once you've taken this test five years later, if you meet certain criteria, such as working underneath a professional engineer for five years under their guidance, doing certain things, then you can qualify to take the P exam, which is the professional engineering exam. Okay? All right. And this is over all types of engineering. It doesn't matter if you're mechanical, civil, electrical, or whatever it may be, you have to take the FE test and then the P test. Now, obviously, if you want to take the fundamentals of engineering test, you want to take this test as it is fresh in your memory. If you try to take the FE test like six years after you graduate, you're going to have forgot a lot of this stuff, right? Okay. 
So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you take the test, the, fun, the fundamentals in engineering, of engineering test early. As a matter of fact, I took this test when I was a senior, my last year of engineering school, okay? When I was still in school, you're able to take the FE test, okay? So that's the best time to take it. Take it, get it out of the way. You know, whether or not you're going to be the P, you're going to become a P or not. But becoming a professional engineer is not necessarily a need to do. You don't need to have a P license, although it does open some of the doors for you. Okay. So, you know, I would take it while you're in class, while you're still at school. Okay? And that's what I did. Okay. So that's the fundamentals of engineering tests. And then you become a PE, you become a professional engineer, and then you get to be there. You get to be able to uh, teach the new engineers that come out of the college, also, or kind of. It's more of a, a mentorship, mentorship type of thing. Okay, so you get to do that. Okay, so that's a professional engineer. Let's go ahead and look at. Let's look at some of the different engineering disciplines. Okay. All right. So let's look, well, yeah. So let's look at the, uh, the four basics first. Okay. So let's talk about mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering on page, where's mechanical engineering? On page 20, there's a little blurb there. On page 20, if you want to go ahead and read that to yourself. So as it states in the book, mechanical engineering is one of the broadest, broadest uh, engineering disciplines and it crosses over to just about almost any type of engineering. Um, it has the greatest demand. You know, as a mechanical engineer, right, you are never going to be out of work. Okay, the only time you'll be out of work is if you choose to be out of work, okay? There is always going to be a demand for mechanical engineers. Um, you know, it's one of those engineering where, as engineering as a whole is, like if you were going to, looking for a job or, or once you, let's say, uh, graduate and, uh, you know, you're looking for a place to place to go live at, right? I mean, you know, it's not like a, a different type of profession where, like, if you, you know, graduated with, you know, some other degree, you, a lot of times you're limited to whatever's available, and you have to go to places where the jobs are at. But engineering in general, you are not going to be doing that. Engineering as general you're gonna pick and choose where you want to live at first, okay? Let's say, you know, if I'm in, I graduate from Morgan State and I wanna to go to the East Coast or whatever, and you know, I would look up the city, wherever, whichever city I wanna to go to, and then you would open up the section where it says engineering and there gonna be just a slew of jobs, okay? And especially so if you're a mechanical engineer, okay? So, I mean, you get to choose, pick and choose what you want. It is probably the most versatile engineering discipline, okay? Some of the things that they do, uh, I don't know, what the book says, the book says, design, development, testing, manufacturing of machines, robots, tools, power generating equipment, such as steam and gas turbines, heating, cooling, refrigeration equipment, internal combustion engineering. So if I, wanted to work on internal combustion engineering, who would I go working for? Okay. 
Anybody? I a mechanical can't. engineer. What? A mechanical engineer. No, yeah, you're a mechanical engineer, and you wanted to work on internal combustion machines, or what was it? Internal combustion, what does it say here? Combustion engines. So I wanted to work on an internal combustion, uh, work, work on that. Who would I go work for? Where would I apply for, to a job for? Like Audi or something, some car yeah, company? Like Audi, Volkswagen, right? Or Ford or, or something like that, right? You would go there and you would design, they'd work on designing their engineering. Right? I mean, their, their engines, right? right? Which is, you know, it's pretty cool stuff. Okay. Uh, as a mechanical engineer, you know, I could work for SpaceX. I could work for, for anybody, right? Okay. Again, so it's pretty wide ranging stuff. Uh, okay. So that's mechanical engineering. Right. Now let's talk about civil engineering. <clears throat> So go back a page to page 18. Civil engineering. As we talked before, you know, civil engineering is, you know, they, they build dams, they build bridges, those kind of stuff, all right? Uh, so let's go ahead and take a read on the paragraph. Everybody go ahead and read that. Let's see. I'll read it. No, no, I've just go ahead and read it, read it to yourself. Oh, okay. But as you're reading to yourself, uh, Ezekiel, you need to go ahead and turn in. Your, are you are you with us? Oh, he was with us and he left. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, okay. So go ahead and turn in your homework. Mm -hmm. So if you turn in your homework that way, then Logan would be the only one who didn't turn his in. Oh, did you turn yours in, Logan? No. I see something here. Oh, I see a blank document. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so as the uh, book says, civil engineering is one of the oldest engineering disciplines. One of the oldest engineering disciplines, okay. We've been building, mankind has been building dams, you know, the Great Wall of China, all these things way back when, since, you know, early, early, way back when, the dawn of history, right? We've been building castles and those type of things, right? That's all we could you know, loosely say it's a part of civil engineering, right? So civil engineering does that, it's construction, okay, civil engineers design and supervise construction of buildings, roads, highways, bridges, dams, tunnels, mass transit systems, and airports. So yeah, you could be digging to put in new subways and all, all kinds of cool stuff there, right? Mm. Okay. Also interesting is that the sub uh, engineering disciplines that they would consider under the civil engineer 
our structural, environmental, transportation, water resources, and geotechnical. Okay. So, Logan, were you with us for the last, you were with us for the last uh, engineering day. Do you remember, do you remember the keynote speaker who talked to us? Yeah. Do you remember what she talked to you about? She talked to us about um, redesigning the airport. Yeah, so she was in charge of the redesign of the PDX, one of the, of the all the airport and, and some of the major projects there. And it was really interesting to hear how everything was so interconnected and it was so involved and some of the considerations that they had to have. And so obviously, this does not happen from one person, right? One person can't do all this stuff, obviously. So it's a, you know, really art or, you know, a way to collaborate and bring everybody in, make sure everybody's on track, everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. And obviously you're gonna have all kinds of problems. So when the problems arise, again, you're not the one who's trying to fix all the problems you're the one who's fixing the problems in big picture wise, but again, you're delegating and you're giving to whatever committee or whatever pro whatever group and they would handle the problems. And it was pretty interesting to see what she had to say about how things work there. Okay. So the other things that you probably would might not have known about civil engineering is it says uh, municipal water supplies and sewage systems. Okay, uh, you know, also they got environmental stuff underneath here too. So this is all kind of interesting, okay, that you do as a civil engineer, okay? Okay, so that's civil engineering. Then right underneath there is electrical. So let's look at that, let's look at electrical. Go ahead and read the paragraph there. Okay, so electrical, electrical there does all kinds of stuff. I'll tell you what it talks about there. Let's see what does it say. It says, design, develop, test, and supervise the manufacturing of electrical equipment, including lighting and wiring for buildings, cars, buses, trains, ships, aircrafts, power generation, transmission equi equipment, uh, electrical motors, control devices, radar equipment, all kinds of good stuff. Okay, so for those of you who don't know this, my undergrad was in electrical engineering. I really never ever got to work in the electrical engineering field because as soon as I graduated, I went to the nuclear field. But uh, you know, one of the things that I was always interested in was the power generation, actually the transmission and distribution part. And that was something that I would would have pursued if I did not go into the nuclear field. Um, yeah, I mean, there could be some really, electrical engineering, again, can be some really big, large stuff, such as designing power grids and, you know, transmission lines and those type of stuff, and, you know, down to designing the power supplies of a, of a pacemaker, okay? So, it's pretty wide range, and as the book says, again, it says at the very end, uh, what? Uh, there is a pretty good outlook in uh, engineering or electrical engineering. So, oh, that's electrical engineering. Um, again, like I said before, it is the discipline that requires the most math. OK, 
okay? Not necessarily hard math, but I mean, it, is, it follows mathematics the closest, okay? So that's the way I would put it, I guess. Again, all the, like I said before, when you're designing, when you, whether you're a mechanical or a civil or electrical, most of the stuff that you're designing is being done by the computer. Okay? You are very rarely going to sit down on a, on a desk with a piece of paper or with a pencil and start designing stuff from scratch. Okay, it usually never works that way because the computer has all the software, it has all the stuff already in there, it also has all the engineering codes embedded so you don't have to go looking for the codes and uh, you know it's everything else, everything's all there on, at your fingertip okay i guess what i'm trying to say is that you don't necessarily have to be good at math to become an engineer mr on i have a question yeah it's sort of an unrelated thing to engineering but um do all engineers earn the same amount of salary no there is a difference. It's not, it's, not like, it's not like anything else, right? I mean, it depends on the supply and the demand, right? I mean, if we are generating, not generating enough electrical engineers, okay? In other words, we're not graduating enough electrical engineers as a country, then the electrical engineering, electrical engineers as a graduate are going to have a higher demand so each company where they're trying to compete to hire an electrical engineer are going to offer more money, okay? So it's a supply and demand thing, okay? So this is part of the things that you will do on your project. When, when you start looking at those type of things, you'll find out that things like uh, mechanical, electrical, average, I'm gonna guess around 70, 70, 70 $75,000 a year, what you're going to be your starting pay is going to be at, whereas like a petroleum engineer, okay, it's going to be like ninety, ninety-five thousand. You know, it all depends. You know, so it depends on Australia, and obviously it depends on that time frame, right? If you're if you know, if you graduated electrical engineering like thirty years ago, the demand is different than it was now. The demand now is a lot bigger for electrical engineering than it was before. So you know, it all depends, right? Did I answer your question there? Who asked that question? Yes, yes, it did. Thank you. Okay, okay, hey, good, 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 good. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, if you want to lump all the engineering as a whole, your starting is going to be anywhere between I'm going to guess like sixty-five to seventy-five thousand dollars. Okay. But you will find out as you do your projects. Okay. So that's that. We have one left, and that is chemical engineering. So let's look at chemical engineering here. Uh, let's look at chemical engineering. Chemical engineering. Chemical engineering. Let's go ahead and read that on page 21. Read that little paragraph to yourself. Okay, so chemical engineering, chemical engineering, right? This is one of those things that if you're not really uh, related to or have an idea, I mean, it's hard to get an eye, grasp an idea of what a chemical engineer does, okay? Your instant reaction, most people's reaction is, oh, it's chemical engineering, you must be good at chemistry, and they work in labs, okay? Not true, okay? Right? If you look there, it says what? 
they work in pharmaceutical, electronic, and the photographic industries. Most chemical engineers are employed by chemical, petroleum refining, film, paper, plastic, paint, and other industries. Okay, chemical engineers all they also work in metallurgical, food processing, biotechnology, and fermentation industry. What's the fermentation industry? Anybody know? Alcohol. Make beer, right? <laughs> you go work for you go work for cores or something, right? <laughs> uh, they usually specialize in polymers, oxidations, fertilizers, and pollution control. Okay, when I was coming up as an engineering, when I after my second year where I was supposed to choose what which engineering discipline I was gonna go into. The very first one that I eliminated was chemical engineering. I eliminated that the first because my father was a chemical engineer and that's the last thing that I was going to do. I was not going to work in the same field that he does because I would have had, I would have had to listen to it till the day I die. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. So even though chemistry came fairly easy for me, Right. Again, which is not necessarily a good indicator that you become a good, a good chemical engineer. All right. You know, I decided that no, there's no way I was going to do chemical engineering. So that's my story for chemical engineering. But chemical engineering is a very fascinating field. Okay. It says polymers there. Polymer is basically like uh, anything that has to do with uh, plastics. Anything that has to do with like wigs, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's very, very, it's a very large uh, field. It covers just about anything. Um, you can work for any different company, right? I mean, as a chemical engineer, you could work for Winchester Gun Company. I mean, there are all kinds of stuff that you can work in, right? Okay, so those are the four basic engineering fields. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you guys, it's 9.30, I have 9.36, so I'm going to give you about 10 minutes, and for 10 minutes, I don't want you to go to the bathroom. What I would like you to do is give me or come up with your top three choices of engineering discipline as of now, okay, as of now that you would be interested in. Okay, give me your top three or write down your top three engineering discipline choices. All right, so go ahead and work on that. Like out of the form, Mr. Ron? Huh? Kind of like the form thing, kind of like the form thing, yeah. But with well, engineering. No, like out of the, the four, or just any engineering field. Huh? Like out of the four or just any engineering? No, 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 any engineering field. Any engineering field that you would like.
Ezekiel, are you there? Yes. Why was your P too late, P point too late, not as pre-calc? Because I forgot it was due on a weekend and not on Monday. Oh. Uh, My apologies. You, you are not going to make this mistake again, correct? Yes, sir. I will not. Okay. So as long as you're not going to make that mistake again, we'll let this one go slide. Thank you. Sam. Yes. Are you still chugging along with the TI-83? Maybe. Man, you're killing me. I need this you, guy? I need you to take over the mantle of the holder of the calculator programs. I can't let you do that as long as you have the TI-83, man. Hmm. You need to get the uh, TI-84 so that I can have Claire talk to you and you guys transfer the files. And you, I want you to be the transfer of the file guys in the calculus class. <laughs> What needs hmm. to happen for this to happen? I don't know. I mean, TI-83, we've had some good times together. <laughs> did you have good, good good. enough times as your dad did with it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to have to have a mantle in the, your classroom with this on it. <laughs> I will put that on the mantle as long as you buy the 84. <laughs> okay. That's, I'll look into it okay. right away. All right. Let me know so that I can go ahead and contact Claire and you guys get, so, I mean, the good thing here is that if you become that person with the calculus class this year, not only do you do it this year, but you can also do it next year. So it reduces the amount of, you know, yeah. transfer of knowledge that needs to happen there. Mm -hmm. Let me know when, when uh, you make that bold move into modern life. <laughs> okay. I want to go make a note real fast. <laughs> uh, okay. Does anybody need any more time? Does everybody have their top three? Yeah, if you don't say anything, I'm gonna assume that you are, you know what you want. Okay. All right then. Logan, what's your top three? Um, biomedical. Biomedical. Um, I have concept car engineers. Automotive engineer, okay, what else? Um, and then, um, oh. And then just a basic electrical engineer, I think. Electrical engineer, okay, all right. <laughs> You're so good at math, right? Oh, of course. <laughs> all right. Henry, what are your top three? My top three are uh, construction management or CME, civil engineer. CME, all right. What else? Computer hardware engineer. Okay. Computer, okay. And biomedical engineer. Biomedical, okay. All right. Lauren? Um, my top three were environmental, mm -hmm. uh, industrial and manufacturing. Okay. And then civil. Civil, all right. Aika? Um, aerospace engineering. Aerospace, okay. Um, biomedical. Biomedical. And chemical engineering. Okay. All right, Sam? Um, I had aerospace, 
-huh. Mechanical and electrical. Ethan. Civil engineering, electrical engineering, and nuclear engineering. Electrical, and then what was the last one? Uh, nuclear. Nuclear, okay. Ezekiel? Biomedical. Biomedical. Nuclear. Uh huh. And aerospace. Aerospace. Okay, all right. So. Looks like we have one, two, three biomedicals, and we have one, two, three aerospace. Now that's interesting. That's interesting. All right. So I'm going to try to group you guys. I'm going to make three groups here. And I want you guys to be researching engineering, like something that you were interested in, obviously, right? So looks like we're going to have a biomedical group. We're going to have an aerospace. Then the third one, what is the third most that comes up the most? We have two electrical or three electricals. Yeah, there we go, we'll do electrical. Okay, so biomedical group. Let's see if we can go ahead and group people. Uh, one, two, three, four, aerospace. Okay, so biomedical, Logan. Ezekiel, aerospace, one, two, three, Ezekiel's already been taken. So who do we have left? We have Lauren and Lauren, and who's left? Eason? What? So, okay, so looks like we have Lauren and Eason is the electrical and engineering group. We have Sam and Aika will be the aerospace. And everybody else is biomedical. Okay, so those are the three groups that we're gonna work with. Biomedical. No, you are electrical. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. Everybody understand where they, who, who the group is? Are we good here? I'm gonna go ahead and take oh, it. Wait, what's my group? With Henry? Yeah. Biomedical. All right, thank you. With Logan and Ezekiel. Okay, so everybody, everybody know their group? Everybody, everybody understand who their group is? Yep. I'm not asking if you like your group. I'm just understanding. I'm just questioning. Do you even understand their group here, right? Okay. So hopefully, I am going to. I want all the work done. Hopefully during class. So you don't have to spend extra time, all right? So well, I will give you time during class to work on this project, or right? as it says there, project here. I, I'm not gonna, I don't think we're gonna work on the project. We're gonna work on the project next week. So 28th and the 30th, I'll have you work on the project, those two class periods. 
So during those two pass, the class periods, you're going to come up with a presentation or a PowerPoint slide that I will have you guys actually present during our Zoom meetings. Okay? All right? So moving right on. Okay, so let's move on to the different ty other types. Okay, so now that we have that, we can touch on all the other ones, right? Because we don't need to do aerospace because we're gonna have we're gonna have our aerospace group tell us what all about aerospace, right? So aerospace, biomedical, we're done, chemical, we're done, environmental. So let's go to page 21. Wait a minute, where am I at? You know, let's go ahead and take a break. <laughs> 